Welcome, it's Michael Bungay Stania. We're back for another webinar, Tools for the Time Crunch Manager, where in 15 minutes or less, I know that sounds like 10, but 15 minutes or less, we get to a really practical tool to help you work less hard, but have more impact. And you can see on the screen what our topic today is about. It's strategy and how I've got one question, one great question for you that's going to make all the difference. And no matter where you sit in the organization, this will help you become a more strategic player, which is a useful thing. Okay, so just so you know who I am, I'm Michael Bungay Stanier. I'm the senior partner of Box of Crayons. At Box of Crayons, we do two things. Our coaching programs help time crunch managers give them practical coaching skills so they can coach in 10 minutes or less. And for everybody in an organization through our great work programs, we help people work less hard, to have more impact, to do less good work, and do more great work. So that's what we're about at Box of Crayons. If you want to, you can join our LinkedIn group, Tools for the Time Crunch Manager. Lots of great resources, great conversation, a burgeoning community there. I'd love you to join there. Just search for it on the web. You'll find it soon enough, quick enough. Okay, enough about us. Let's get on our way to an awesome webinar. I think you're going to enjoy this. Now, I start every webinar with a single question just to get you focused, and it is simply that. How focused do you plan to be? And with pen and paper, I want you to give yourself a score. One is low. One means I am the white noise to all the other stuff that's going on. You've got screens on, phones on, paperwork everywhere. You're doing everything you can to increase maximum distraction. Seven, on the other hand, bringing zen-like focus to the, to the conversation, our webinar now. Turn off things, get away from the, for, the distractions, do all you can to be really present over the next 15 minutes or so, so you can squeeze the most out of this webinar. Now, I don't mind what number you give yourself, the choice is yours, but what I would say is, if you need to tweak your environment at all, just to make it more conducive, to hit the number you've given yourself, then do that now. Just take a minute or so, 30 seconds, whatever it takes, to get ready. Okay. Let's get into this conversation about strategy, or as I like to think of it, strategy. And I'm using air quotes advisedly because I think strategy and strategic is one of those misused words in our organizational life. Let's face it, whenever we want to make something sound more important, more thoughtful, more critical, we slap strategy or strategic on the front of it and hope that it makes a difference. We don't just have a meeting, we have a strategic meeting. We don't make a decision, we make a, a strategic decision. We don't just eat donuts, we eat strategic donuts. You know, it really is one of those words that is used so often that it actually becomes a little bit meaningless. We have a, a list of things to do. We don't call them a, a to-do list. We call it our strategic plan. Now, there's a book that's come out recently that I'm a big fan of, actually by a local Toronto guy called Roger Martin, Playing to Win. Here's my little copy of it. He actually offers up five questions, five questions that I think are actually useful. And I'm just going to read them to you because I'd encourage you to look at this book. You can see he actually uh, wrote it with the former CEO of Procter & Gamble. And there's lots of good P&G stories here. But Martin's five questions are, what's our winning aspiration? Where will we play? How will we win in chosen markets? What capabilities must be in place to win? And what management systems are required? So those are the five questions in playing to win. But I want to get to the question, whoop, there we go. I want to get to the question behind the five questions. The question behind the five questions. I'm kind of thinking this is Lord of the Ring style, one ring to rule them all. I think there's one question to rule them all. It's the heart of actually being strategic. Because here's the thing. People think strategy is what you're saying yes to. And there's truth in that. But in fact, a yes is empty without a strong no to support it. So unless you're coming with, if we're saying yes to this, what are we saying no to? Then you're really missing out on something. In fact, one of the quotes that I have right by my computer, I keep it here all the time, is from Steve Jobs. He says, focus means saying no to the hundreds of other good ideas that are out there. Focus, strategy, pretty similar concepts. I'm going to put it even more bluntly than Steve Jobs. Pfft, who is this Steve Jobs anyway? Here's what I would say. No is to the thing you want to say yes to. So that's what strategy is, saying no to the things you really want to say yes to. The sense of focus. And just to make it really apparent to you, this, good, powerful. Look at that. You know exactly 
where you're putting your time, your attention, you're bringing your great work to that, as opposed to this, which is when you spread your attention, your focus, your resources all over the place, you're left with mediocrity, with banality. So that's what I really want you to take away as a starting point. What am I going to say yes to? And therefore, what am I going to say no to? What's the stuff I have to say no to? So I can bring a really strong yes to where I really want to bring my attention. Now, where are you going to bring your attention? I want to give you our 3P model. 3P model, there you go, three. And I think there are three places that you can really look to really make a difference, to think about how you're going to achieve what you want to achieve. And here are the three Ps that I consider you to look at. There are projects. And by projects, I'm really meaning the stuff that you're working on, the content of whatever it is you've decided to say yes to. You've got to do that. You've got to do it in extraordinary ways. Second P, people. Who are the people you need to get engaged in this? You can't do it by yourself. So how do you get, to use the words of Jim Collins, the right people on the bus? And the third place I'd look at is patterns. Now, patterns can be patterns about you, which is like, how are we going to, how might you get in the way of performing your strategic input? But there's another pattern, it's broader. In fact, you could call it another P altogether called processes, which is what are the structures that we need to get right? What are the systems that we need to get in place to allow us to really deliver on our strategic promise, on our strategic goal? So the three Ps about what you want to say yes to and what you want to, know to say no to. And as a way of thinking about that, when you look at the projects you're working on, the content you're creating, when you look at the people you're working with and who's involved, when you look at the patterns and slash the processes that are enabled to help you reach your strategic goal, I think what you need to be thinking about, uh, what is the top 10% there and what is the bottom 10% there? And you know where I'm going with this, don't you? With the top 10%, how do you double down here? How do you be more courageous? How do you be braver? How do you be more resilient to really drive success on your top 10% projects of the key people you need to invest time in, in the processes and the patterns you want to work with? And of course, what's in your bottom 10% and how do you start eliminating those immediately and then ongoing, that constant process of stepping away from stuff so you can bring the strong yes to what really needs to be done. So there we go. There's my take on strategy. Before you go, here's what I want you to do. Write down the two critical ahas and insights from this webinar. Write them down because if you don't write them down, they will be exiting your brain shortly. So write that down. Write down one thing you want to do differently as a result of listening to this webinar with me. It might be reviewing all the stuff on your plate and figuring out what to say no to. It might be going to teach somebody about this power of yes and no. It might be picking up Roger Martin's book. Whatever it is for you, take away one action so that the time you've invested in this webinar actually pays off. Now, a few quick things. Who else needs to see this? If you'd like them to see this webinar, get them to sign up and then they can check out the webinar as well. So get other people involved. It will give you a, uh, your own community to discuss some of these insights from the webinar. Secondly, you know about our Box of Crayons programs. I talked about them at the top of the webinar. If you're interested, all the details are at boxofcrayons.biz. And a final call, do think about joining us on the LinkedIn group. Really great community. We'd love to have you there. Find it on LinkedIn. Sign up. We'll say yes immediately, and you can be part of that group as well. Michael Bungay Stanya from Box of Crayons. Figure out what your strong yes is. More importantly, figure out what your strong no's are. <laughs>